like Noir Vortex here and uh, thought I'd return to doing a few talking video games I haven't done that for a while um, so I thought I'd wade into quite a burning issue at the minute which is uh, the um, free speech issues in um, well I'm going to focus on the UK but I uh, can extend to broader than that I guess so I'm thinking specifically of the uh, uh, Count D Dankula case. I almost said Count Dankula then just out of that uh, blip. But uh, Count Dankula case, one of the so called Nazi pog controversy, and the uh, Corbyn anti Semitic row that's exploded in the last week or so on social media. So I'm going to uh, talk first about Count Dankula. So Count Dankula is a YouTuber who's been um, active for so many years, I believe. Well known for his, uh, I'm not really that familiar with his content, I've seen some of it, but mostly f well known for kind of shit posting and um, producing commentary videos as well. Uh, basically he posted a video where he, uh, in some people's opinion it would have been in bad taste, where he uh, got his dog to do a Nazi salute, said gas the Jews on the video. Uh, it was basically a video that he made to annoy his girlfriend is how he himself says that he uh, the reason he gave for why he made the video now i can see how people could see this is poor taste obviously any kind of jokes that um revolve around genocide are going to be offensive to someone obviously someone's sensibilities uh, uh for me as a kind of progressive it's kind of uh, this is just a moot point really, we'll sort of cover it before going any further. It's kind of off-putting to see him being associated with Tommy Robinson as well, but I mean from what I know of the guy, he's not he's not a far-right advocate. I think he's more of a general advocate for free speech, I suppose. Anyway, I digress. So, um, let's just break this down. Right, and I'm going to broaden this out a bit so it's a bit more than just so I'm going to you know, talk more broadly about free speech in general on the internet. Now my honest opinion on this is that I think it's completely overstepping the mark to... Uh, he's going to prison so I think that's completely overstepping the mark of a reaction to what he's done. And really what he's done is just in some people's eyes an offensive joke and you've got to be able to because it's got to be, if we want to maintain having a free society, then we have to have the, it has to include the f freedom to offend. And I think the left in general are just mismanaging this all over the shop. And like I said, I admittedly am kind of a left-wing person. I generally support socialist um, policies where, where it's possible to implement. And I would consider myself like a libertarian socialist. Um, but part of being a libertarian socialist is that you uh, support the right for individuals to express themselves in their individual manner. Uh, now with this Count Dankula case, he, yeah they're sure the joke's in poor taste, but in context he's not doing it to promote race hatred, he's not doing it to promote anti-semitism. And yeah obviously I can see how people can interpret it that way, and it is in bad taste, you know, really. It's, it's kind of, I mean I saw it first a few years ago, or whenever it was first released, and I thought uh, I did, you know, chuckled a bit maybe at some of it, but also I thought yeah, some of it's kind of dodgy territory. But at the same time, whatever, someone put a funny, you know, slightly offensive video on YouTube. Wow, happens every day. I've probably done some myself. Um, you know, some of the videos I've done could be interpreted as being offensive to one group or another. <coughs> So and I'm gonna broaden this out a bit. So to, I want to make a you know more involved point than that, which isn't really a point. Um, well, I'm just covering what's gone on really. So I think in Count Dankula's uh, case, um, it's yeah. I don't. I don't know really. It's just, oh shit. Sorry. Hang on. Um, I think basically my view on this is if uh, 
if you silence constantly opinions which you disagree with and don't allow them to be critiqued in a public forum, then you're actually killing a large part of what the internet's about for a start. So the internet, obviously, people have different opinions. That's just the free, and the free struggle of opinions is actually what makes a society free, really. If you just have one prevailing view or, you know, just several official views are allowed, then you don't have that free struggle of ideas. Then also bad ideas kind of don't get uh, critiqued enough. Uh, and I'm just going to take this further, like, so obviously Antifa has become quite a, a thing and it's been critiqued quite a lot by members of the so-called alt-right or, you know, right-wing conservatives. Um, you had the thing of Sargon recently where um, one of his talks or so, somewhere he's talking with uh, Anne Ryan's um, advocate, I can't remember what his name is, but they had some students invading that and trying to shut it down basically. And I think on, in all honesty, a lot of this is counterproductive to uh, developing a, like, a, a left that is reasonable and rational and that people can get on board with it easier I suppose. People are just going to see this and they're going to think... I mean, obviously, I think there are certain cases where um, people do have to take a stand against, um, you know, real fascists, really. But as much as, you know, in the case example of Sargon of a card, I'm not a fan of him. I think he is a bit... Um, he jumps too much to anti-feminism and I think his anti-feminist videos are generally... Um, quite tokenistic really in his critique of what what he's actually critiquing but should he be allowed a platform to say his piece yes and then have someone who can really take him on like if, if he's got a developed critique of feminism which he clearly has he's clearly an intelligent person despite my having several misgivings and um, disagreements with the man himself personally as a figure of philosophy I suppose I, he should still be able to say his piece, and uh, yeah, I think if also a deeper point now with real fascists or real ideologues of the far right, the more you persecute them, surprisingly, the more of a persecution complex they get, even though they've already got a quite a deep persecution complex being on the far right. Obviously, if you're in the far right, then it obviously involves nationalism or can involve a great deal of racism, uh, classism, whatever. Um, typically, far right movements are uh, white and working class movements, disenfranchised, and then a lot of Machiavellian arseholes who just take advantage of that. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think the more that you. Um, persecute kind of lighter figures on my right the more this kind of persecution uh, complex can be given root seed to develop further so it's actually in a lot of ways I think it's really counterproductive um, I think also in terms of um, so if you look at it historically uh, and I'm, I'm a bit shabby on the details of this because it's been a while since I looked into it I mean, Chomsky himself the, um, was the great anarchist thinker and intellectual of the time really um, he defended free speech there was an incident in France I can't remember this specific example because I'm, you know, I'm doing this off the cuff it's just on the top of my head um, and I've obviously kind of fluffed that by not being able to remember exactly the details of uh, um, how he defended uh, it was, I think it was a holocaust a holocaust denial uh, I know I'm getting into dodgy territory now but there's only the dodgy territory that you usually going to get some interesting contradictions or some interesting um, subjects that can be elaborated on. So uh, Chomsky, I think, defended the right of a Holocaust denier, and I'm going to check this before I put this out there, defending the right of a Holocaust denier to be able to express their views in public. Um, and honestly I'm with him on that because it's, and it's a good example I think to uh, refer to in terms of Sargon and, and the anti-far demos and all that if you can refute these figures the better more you can and I think they'd be open to this I think, you know, especially someone like Sargon who 
as a self-confessed liberal is all for uh, open discussion and you know a free exchange of ideas um, would all be for that and I think did, what, uh, what's, I'm going to go on to Corbyn shortly I'm just kind of like trying to work my way through this slowly I think if we kind of lose sight of the fact that actually having a open discussion is always the most positive way and you can debunk ideas if you're intelligent enough you can debunk someone you can you can you know, if you've got a, like a intellect that can um articulate why something is false then you should use that power i mean i've tried to do it in my small way on this youtube channel i don't know i don't get that many views and uh, i don't really get that much attention really you know, I record an ancient equipment, I'm quite got quite a unedited style as well. I don't tend to um really uh edit my videos and that's I do that purposefully. I wanna make it more of a conversation but anyway that's by the way. But um if this can't happen, either back and forth online or uh, you know, otherwise in R L in a debating sense, then we are actually regressing and you know, that's a regressive thing. And I think, to be honest, the Sargons of the world, uh, and Sargons not, uh, he's, I don't, like I said, I don't really like his content. There's the occasional things that I might agree with him on, but most of it, the anti-feminist stuff is just off-putting. Um, well, I think he often looks for, um, he looks for offence where there isn't necessarily some, sometimes, you know, almost paradoxically, like a lot of the figures that he will be mocking, I think, sometimes. Uh, so I think he's just another... Um, in a way, another kind of a different side of a different coin. Uh, one interesting little thing about this that is being of interest to me is how Sargon seems to be kind of um, almost. I mean, I've not really looked into this in depth, so don't take every word that I say in uh, um, as gospel, but. It seems like he's been kind of trying to curry favour with like the British far right in some respects. I'm not saying he's currying favour. I just that was the wrong way to put that. Sorry. I mean, he's just kind of interacting a lot with this Tommy Robinson EDL um, subset of British politics, I guess. Which is for a liberal is. I mean, I, I've, I've seen his videos where he justifies this by saying that he's. He doesn't agree with Tommy Robinson's views, but he wants to open a channel of communication. So I'm going to understand it from that point of view. Uh, but it, with the Count Dankula case, and I know I'm rambling a bit now, but just bear with me. He seemed to... Um, well, he uploaded a video with Tommy Robinson speaking on behalf of him, I guess. Which I thought was really quite strange. I, I guess he was doing it to prove a point. But, uh, like, I, you know, like I'm... Even though, I'm like obviously, like I said, I'm a self-confessed libertarian socialist, I still hold those liberal values of like free speech and the ability to express one's individuality strong myself. So I can understand it conceptually, but also it kind of off instinctively it put me off that watching any more of his content. Really, to be honest, I mean, obviously, I will still watch some of it just to keep abreast of what's going on in political terms on YouTube, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I, that is off-putting, and I think that will be off-putting for a lot of liberal types, or left-leaning types. Because Tommy Robinson's like... I mean, I, I think his racism is sugar-coated now, and he's kind of seen as a reform figure, but I don't think he is, really. I think he's still driven by the same old prejudices and um, ideas. That, and he's, he's, he's time and time again confessed not to be a... Uh, a racist or have any kind of like racist perspectives but he's clearly um, like if you look at his actual rhetoric and what he says um, he's just against Islam existing as a thing and yeah sure no one wants Sharia law but that's not on the cards as far as I can see and I think it's just scaremongering to even suggest it is that we're going to have Sharia law as a separate <coughs> You know, set that Syria law being uh, imposed on people. I think it's just alarmist and f just false more than that. Anyway, Count Dankula, who's 
Um, I think it's absurd that it's got to this position. I think anybody who actually cares about um, having the ability to express your own opinion online should be aghast at this. A lot of people's reactions have been, to be fair. So the general consensus, as far as I can tell from social media, is that this is absurd. Uh, and it is, really. I mean, if the guy was vehemently anti-Semitic and uh, uh, a Nazi, clearly, which he's not, then there might be some kind of point of, you know, this is real hate speech because you're actually calling for the extermination of Jews, uh, you know, you're actually calling for that, and you are a self-confessed Nazi, blah, blah, blah. There might be a case for it then, because then it's clearly under UK law is defined as hate speech, but it was satire. And he's described it as satire, and like a lot of his um, content on his YouTube channel, it is clearly tongue in cheek and yeah like a little shit posting and edgy order I suppose but there's a place for that on the internet and if we let the internet slip into kind of draconian uh, zone of controlled speech then it's, it's really a slippery slope and everybody suffers from that at the end of the day I mean it's what the, the internet's the, the actual internet or the freedom of the internet people to express themselves freely on the internet is being eroded day by day um, I mean this is a separate issue but net neutrality in the US is just a really bad development um, because it actually favours corporate expressions of uh, opinions really at the end of the day without going through the into all that it's just a separate thing and finally I'll just go on to the uh, Corbyn mural brew that was just brewed up recently now this is just I mean frankly to be honest I was just, I wasn't that shocked that this has happened because it's, you almost expect it, it's coming up to like, uh, you know, vote time, people, uh, local elections, so, yeah, so get another Corbyn smear out there, I suppose, um, but it's, it's actually absurd, like, they're basically, there's this mural in the UK that was taken down in, I think, 2013 or 2012. Uh, it features bankers and like a Freemasonic symbol in the background. It's a graffiti piece mural. And um, basically, Corbyn has been accused of anti Semitism because he was against the mural's removal. So, ironically enough, somebody who's a self confessed progressive socialist is being accused of anti Semitism um, uh, because he's defending the right of artists to express themselves freely. And the artist is, if you actually look at the artist's um, quotes, he is quoted as saying that yes, two of the figures are Jewish because of the Jewish banking, uh, Rockefellers and um, I can't remember the other one, but two of the figures are Jewish, but it's kind of incidental. It's not about, it's not a painting about Jews and some kind of, you know, paranoid Jewish fancy of Protocols of Elders of Zion or anything like that. It's actually just a, they happen to be Jews, that's incidental. But this has just been people that seems taking a mountain, uh, a molehill and making a mountain out of it really. Because uh, Corbyn, like I said, has left a comment and said that Diego Riera, he's made a comparison to Diego Rivera's famous mural that got removed having a portrait of Lenin, which is Fairish comparison, I suppose. It's it is a censorship, uh, but like I mean, I'm instinctively against censorship because I think, especially with art as well, because I'm an artist and I think if you censor art, you you are I mean you are actually going down, taking to an extreme down like a a bureaucratic authoritarian structure there. If, like for example, the Soviet Union, Stalin imposed um, uh, very state-controlled regulations on art, socialist realism, enforced socialist realism, and um, well, I've actually been looking into uh, Shostakovich recently, who's a composer in Russia, Dmitry Shostakovich, and this is interesting just as an aside, where he, um, he was a composer and he kind of sarcastically undermined the Soviet regime with his music, it's quite interesting, but that's an aside, uh, and yeah, I just think it's it's kind of an absurd thing to dig up something from 2012, a Facebook post, and then just drag this out over the media for the last week or so. It's, it is absurd. I mean, this is the whole 
this whole debate around free speech is just getting stupid now. Like really, at the end of the day, it's very simple. If you want to maintain a free society, then we have to maintain the right to be A, responsible for our speech, sure. B, uh, aware of the consequences of that speech, too. We'd also see the freedom to express those opinions and the freedom to have them challenged. I mean, this is not things that any kind of like self-described supporter of a liberal society would find difficult to process or agree with. But we seem to be in a situation now where uh, it's these um, these this is coming up again and again, and it's it's. I don't. I, mean, I think it is primarily the so-called regressive left. I guess that are responsible for a lot of this, uh, but it's not really. Because I mean, like if you look at the Corbyn case, which the um, the anti-Semitism, that's like a lot of the criticism there is coming kind of from the moderate right of the Labour Party. Uh, and I can't criticise that too much because I'm a Labour Party member, so I can't go into individual names and stuff. But I think a lot of that's just coming from the right of the Labour Party. In terms of like saying you know it's anti-Semitic and it was censored anyway the mural was covered over a long time ago but um, it wasn't covered over it just got wrong phrase actually sorry it got it got covered over but it was planned to be covered over so anyway I'm not gonna go too much into the specifics of that but um, yeah I mean it just seems like a common sense democratic values are kind of being undermined quite a lot which is depressing to, 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 to see. Uh, and we definitely don't want to move to a, a world where um, you can't make comedy. And this is a really important. You can't or you can't make comedic light of certain very dark or potentially offensive things. And everybody's got their thing. Like everyone's got things that they find offensive, and it's usually to do with personal experience. It's usually like, like for example, I have experience of uh, mental health problem with bipolar, um, and I guess. To be honest, I've not seen many jokes around that, and most of the ones I have seen around it have been quite self-affirming because it's usually done by individuals who've had the disorder. But if someone told a really crass, offensive joke about mental health, I would probably laugh at it if it was in the right spirit. Because if you can't laugh at your own darkness, and if you can't laugh at your darkness in general, like I've got a very dark sense of humour. I wouldn't say it's twisted, but it's kind of slightly warped, I guess. Like a lot of my favourite comedians look at these kind of frayed edges of humanity and kind of just bring it to some kind of a light or make light of it really. And I think if comedians, and Ricky Gervais I think tweeted about this as well, if comedians can't have the right to cause offence, then comedians will actually lose their place in society because part of comedy's power is that it can say the unsaleable and like get rid of attention in the room by um yeah like putting bringing light to it and i'm, I'm not comparing count dankula's video to some kind of great piece of comedy it was like a you know it's kind of a silly shit post which was kind of funny the first time around maybe and then just you know it was what it was but um yeah that is getting arrested for it now and you know, getting tr on trial and everything else and it's going to prison i think it's the latest wasn't it is absurd to be honest and it doesn't set a good precedent context is king i'm sorry but it is like george um carlin you know talked a lot about this context i mean i want to annoy shitloads of people now if they watch this video but uh he had a rape joke basically and i know trigger warning rape subject um or the subject of rape but um he had a joke where he talked about um people saying that a rape joke can never be funny ever and then he went to demonstrate like can you imagine it in a fudge raping daffy the duck or something like that now i know this is a controversial subject and it could obviously trigger people and such but um he said context and the meaning and the intention behind the joke is what makes it funny like obviously the example he gave there was an incredibly just absurd stupid image um obviously with those kind of jokes where there's a clear victim, you have to be very careful as a comedian as to how you approach them because you can just come off sounding like a cold asshole, really. And you know, to be honest, whenever if you've ever been to a stand-up club and 
you've seen a comedian tell a bad rape joke, they will get a bad reception, and they'll be, you know, quite right too. Like, I mean, if it's not a, it's not a subject that you approach with uh, uh, without knowing what you're actually doing as a comedian in terms of how you're going to approach it. It's just a really difficult subject to preach, like with many other different subjects. But anyway, I'm kind of going off into the realms of what comedy is now. But I think, basically, at the end of the day, I think comedy, things which are done with comedic intent should be viewed as such, especially if it's digital content. The guy clearly said it was satire. Um, he's not a Nazi. That's just ridiculous assertion to make. The kind of, like, buddying up with Tommy Robinson is a kind of problematic for me in some respects, but I can... I don't. He, you just got to take people at their word. He doesn't really. Cam Dankler, from what I know of him, is, and I don't know a great deal. I've never really watched much of his content, but he doesn't actually seem like, to me like a. Um, he doesn't. He's, I don't. I think he might be a Scottish nationalist. Maybe that's. A, but that means a very different thing to. Uh, in Scotland, I think. To you know, traditional level forms of nationalism. Anyway. I'm not going to ramble on too much now. I've already talked for quite a bit. There's a lot of stuff I could probably talk more about comedic intention. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I think intention, context, freedom of speech is important to protect. And like a lot of left-wing figures from history have actually... Um, I mean, even going to like Marxists, like Rosa Luxemburg, um, freedom is always the freedom of the individual to think differently. That's one of the direct quote pretty much from Rosa Luxemburg, like one of the... Um, German Marxists, who was behind the Spartacus League and you know, really well-developed Marxist critiques of many different things. Ah, well, she's actually a, crit a deep critic of uh, Leninism, Marxist Leninism. Um, she critiqued the way that the Soviet Union was developing. Um, I don't know, I'm not going to go too much into that, but yeah, I mean, there's, and then obviously, I guess, I might as well just explore this, I might as well, mate, it's quite a long one, why not? So, so Slav Zizek's quite an interesting figure on the left, because he's often been like the poster boy for the kind of thing that I'm talking about here, which is like a pro-freedom left, really. They're pro-freedom of speech, pro-liberty of the individual to say whatever they want. And also pro-being um, able to play with political correctness. Because I can see that political correctness in certain contexts is a useful thing, and it's a useful construct to have in society. But also... That does mean that you should be able to undermine it in comedy if you like. Um, I'm not going to say political correctness gone far in this video because I think rarely is that phrase ever really genuinely applicable to many things. But uh, you should be able to like, and like Slavoj like does this a lot with his like lectures. If you watch him, he'll subvert political correctness to make a point using it from a Lacanian perspective, a psychoanalytical perspective. Um, to say something about the human condition and what it is to be a mind, what it is to be an really existential being, I suppose. Uh, and, and I realise now that I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but this is where these videos get interesting. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what I was going to say. Uh, Corbyn Yule is clearly not anti Semitic, he's been against racism, he's a campaign raised his life. Like, I'm not saying Corbyn's perfect, I've uh, he's dealt a lot with a lot of blows which have been thrown his way with a degree of uh, calmness I'd say in a lot of ways I don't really understand why he gets um, a lot of the flack he gets but I can also understand why because of like tabloids and some journalism etc journalism but, um, but yeah I don't know what else to say really I've run out of things to say so uh I'm gonna. I'll try and find some links to that Chomsky thing about the Holocaust denier because I'm sure that's true. Yeah. Yeah. The Forest and the Fair. That was what it's called. And yeah, I think that's a good precedent to like look at. I've never. I've never really read through all of it. But I just know of it from uh, my own research like online about Chomsky and yeah and uh, Chomsky is an interesting figure to look at I think in this he's 
he in a similar way seems to be, or you know, well, he's libertarian, so I don't mean that in the degenerated or like American sense of the word, it's like a pro, really pro free market, pro business libertarian, libertarian actually comes from the left originally, which is just the concept of liberty, uh, the uh, and, yeah, concept of individualism as a I'm not going to ramble about that anyway, no point, in a bit. 